Second Epistle of John, the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which we did last time, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. We pick up now, which dwelleth in us. As review, you can go back to the videos and the audios of what we've done for John. We're up to number 15 in just two verses. And what does John say? He says, the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us. So a continuation from last week, we're dealing with the truth, and the truth dwelleth in us. And we talked about last week, can a Christian, or is a Christian, capable of always telling the truth? And the answer is yes, for it dwelleth in us. And we're going to get deep again. And these studies are from the babe in Christ to the aged. And to learn and to refresh. And let's go into the truth and the indwelling. As we step into the water. And some of you may be over your head. Some of you may be up to your waist. Some of you may be up to your knees. Or some of you just may be up to your ankles. And if you don't understand this, it's not to your discredit. And maybe it's not your time. Maybe you can put this into your heart for later. Now, if we take our Bibles to John 14, we're going to talk about God. You say, well, well, God is all true. In John 14, 17, We read the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 17. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Well, let's... Go to verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, capital C, that he may abide with you forever. Now this is the promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Notice him, he. This is the third member of the Trinity. It is the Spirit of Truth. It is Satan that lies, John 8, 44. The world cannot receive this spirit. Ye must be born again to get this. Satan is all lies, and yet the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, are all in truth. This is the spirit of truth. And lo and behold... As we've been studying, you know it is God. The studies we've been doing, you know the truth is God. You know the truth is the Word, Jesus Christ. But what part of God? What part of God are we looking at? As we turn to Romans 8, 9. Scripture. I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let you find out what I believe what I think. I'm going to let you know what the scriptures say. In Romans 8 verse 9 But ye are not in the flesh and many are. You're not to be in the flesh but in the spirit, the spirit of God known as the capital S. If so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 
And remember we read in John that the world can't receive the Holy Spirit. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, you are not saved. You will burn in hell for all eternity. You will not get the truth. I don't care if you're in a church or religion. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. That is what will separate you for eternity. Away from God or to be with God by having God in you today. Satan will lie to you. The devils in hell will lie to you. But God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit will not, cannot, and will not ever lie. So which dwells in us the truth that God Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Paul says in chapter 8, dwells in you. If you are born again, if you are saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ outside of works, you have inside of you, according to John and according to Paul, According to Jesus Christ, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it shall be established the Old Testament law states that through Jesus, through Paul, and through John, if you are saved, the Holy Spirit is in you. And that's where I believe it's Hebrew says, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. How can you ever be alone? I feel so alone. I, no, you're not. If you're saved, you've got God dwelling in you. 1 Corinthians 3.16 1 Corinthians 3.16 Paul writing Know ye not You ought to know this That ye are the temple of God We don't go to a building Like they did in the Old Testament We are the building And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Paul is not writing to lost people. He's writing to the church that's saved. See, we got a miscalculation today. We think we're to bring the lost people into the church house. That's not so. That's not Bible foundation. That's not biblical. The church is a body of saved individuals, and Paul says, you got the Spirit of God in you. So what are we talking about Today in First John, or Second John, excuse me, which dwelleth in us, not only the truth, but the Spirit of truth, and not only the Spirit of truth, but the Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity, is in us. What a wonderful thing! John fifteen twenty six. Again, we're going to let the Scriptures talk. You can't say this is me. It's not style of chapter and verse. And I said, John 15, 26. I will tell you what I think. And I will tell you what the Bible says. 15, 26. I was going to read 16, excuse me. But when the Comforter is come. Now, if you've got a red letter Bible, what is the red letters? The words of Christ. So this is Jesus speaking. I don't have a red letter Bible, but I know this is Christ speaking. But when the Comforter is come, whom I... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go back to 1416 in John. I will pray the Father and he shall give you over here in uh, uh, 15... 26, he says, whom I will send. Now, I'm sorry for your friends that are Jehovah Witnesses, but Jesus Christ says he is God, and God said that Jesus Christ is God. In one verse, either, either he's lying, and the other verse he's lying, which he's not because he's all true. He says, I will, the Father will send, and he says, I will send. They're both the same. And they're both talking about the Comforter. Did you get that? When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceeded from the Father, he, will test, he shall testify of me.
the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, is from the Father, is the same, and dwells inside every believer. Not only are you washed in the blood, but you've got God's internal spirit inside you. And he's the spirit of truth. He will never lie to you. And if you believe a lie, it's only after Satan, not God's spirit. So John 14, 26 says, Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. John 14, 26. It's not the pastor. He's only a vessel. It's not the evangelist. He's only a vessel. It's not the missionary. He's only a vessel. The teacher that teaches you in your church... In these vid videos, I'm just a vessel. If you learn something from me, it is the Holy Spirit according to John 14, 26. I did not teach you. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. And when you're dealing with people, and that verse comes up, when you when you you're in your car and that hymn comes to mind and you sing it. When you have thoughts of Jesus and remember the stories of the Bible, according to John fourteen twenty six, that is the Holy Spirit inside you. When you reminisce what Jesus has done for you, it is the Holy Spirit. When you're about to quote scripture again, that is the third member of the Trinity. Don't think by memorizing verses, it is you. Listen, I've tried to memorize tons of verses and I can't. And for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit does not want me to, to do that. i got a verse right here, John Jeremiah 17, 9. It's written right there. But I can quote by the Holy Spirit, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. But for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But not of works, lest any man should boast. All they that live godly shall suffer all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. That, that's all the Holy Spirit in my heart. Using the word that's Lord Jesus Christ of God the Father. It is not me. The Holy Spirit does the work and how do you know he is right? He is the spirit of truth. How can I tell if it's in a cult? If they speak lies and hypocrisy and of heresies, that is not the Holy Spirit. Nowhere in the Bible are we told today, in this church age present, 2013, we're to speak in tongues. Blah, 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 blah. And if you have somebody that tells you to do that, Paul says there's another spirit. In Corinthians 11. That is not the Holy Spirit because that wouldn't be the truth. Now, if I were to tell a lost man he's going to go to hell unless he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ with his heart and proclaim with his mouth a, a salvation, that's the truth. That's the Holy Spirit. If I'm going to tell you that there's seven years of tribulation coming and one day before that the church is going to be raptured, the church is not going through the tribulation, that is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. And if somebody would tell you, no, the church will go through the tribulation, that's the spirit of a lie. That is not the Holy Spirit. That's how you can tell. That's how you can know. So, warning. And I've said this already. Paul says there is another spirit in Corinthians 11. Which spirit is it from? 
Well, if you got one that's from God the Father, where would the other spirit come from? Satan. And if God's spirit is the spirit of truth, what would Satan's spirit be? If you read John 8, 44. Satan's a liar. So any lie of a spirit will come from Satan. You must know these two spirits. You've got to know these two spirits. First, and, uh, first John, John writes, you're to try the spirits. It says in Corinthians 2 that, that, that everybody falls for this one, that Satan is, is, is likened to an angel of light. Oh, I've seen the light, an oh, angel of light and all that. And then he talks about the next verse, about his ministers being that of the righteous. Satan has ministers. You need to know the truth from the lie, because if you think every pastor is saved, you're, you've been fooled. You've been led to believe a lie of Satan. Religion is a lie. Jesus Christ is true. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. About the religion, the Bible says in Proverbs, every way of a man seemeth right, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. And I didn't quote that completely. One is entirely true, and one is entirely a lie. It's one or the other. There are churches that lie to themselves. There are Christians that lie. You know, even as a born-again Christian, when you have the Holy Ghost in you, when you tell a lie, you are of Satan. When you tell your children about Santa Claus, when you tell your children about the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy, that's a lie. When you tell your wife she, don't look, she looks good in that dress and she don't, that's a lie. When you call your, your employer and say, I don't, I'm sick today, I'm not coming in, and you go somewhere else or you do something else, that's a lie. You are taking part of Satan. A lie is a very serious situation. Believing in a lie will put you in hell, maybe. A lie can distrust a relationship between a husband and a wife. A lie, which you need to get last week's recording, destroys a character. A lie rests on Satan and the truth is God. Plain and simple. John 14, 17. We read, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The Holy Spirit does not just dwell or abide in any person. He only dwells in believers, saved, born again Christians. No lost man has the Holy Spirit, no matter what he may claim. If he is not saved, and back to Romans 8:9. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Lacking the Holy Spirit is you are lost. Having the Holy Spirit is you are saved. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, you are not saved. You are not a child of God. Only those that are born again that have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior and nothing else. 1 Corinthians 3.16 1 Corinthians 3.16 Next time we're going to get into a really great subject which dwells in us. We're going to move further and it's going to be even greater. We already talked about last week the truth. This week we're talking about the truth that's in us, the Holy Spirit. And next week, Lord willing, next time, we're going to talk about eternal security that the Holy Spirit and truth will dwell in for you forever. 
Kyle's up. And we've done a series. If you go to our website, you go to my sermon uh, network, my thing there, or YouTube. You'll see that we've done a complete study from what salvation is to already what to do at, even after I, I'm saved when I sin. About eternal security. And if you got, well, we'll get to that next week, Lord going. 1 Corinthians 3.16, I want to jump ahead. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Let's get that today. If you are saved, born again, before we go into next week, Lord willing, before we go into that, let's get the fact that let's get the main course of the today's dinner is, if you are saved, you got the Holy Spirit. If you are not saved, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Get that prime, simple, ABCs. If you're a babe in Christ, no. You're saved, you got the Holy Spirit. If you're not saved, you don't have it. If your husband, if your daughter, if your father, if your grandmother are not saved, they do not have the Holy Spirit. If your pastor is not saved, he does not have the Holy Spirit. Having God's Spirit in you now, if you're saved, Having submitted to God's plan of salvation, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried and arose again on the third day, makes you a temple of God. And there are churches out there that call themselves the temple and even being Baptists. No, that's wrong. Temple is you. Inside of you is God. You are better than the tabernacle in Solomon's temple and the temple that Ezra built and the temple that, that Jesus Christ went in when he was on this planet in, in uh, Jerusalem. You are better than that because you have it living in your living heart. The building was just cloth. It was just stones. It was wood. And they, in Jesus' time, kicked Jesus out of the temple. But you are a living organism with the living God inside you. Where the presence of God was in the most holy place, he's in the most holy place of you. And it's not your head, it's your heart. You need to get the heart issue in the Bible. The heart is the matter. A psychiatrist can't help you because he deals with this thing. That's nothing. This is what's important. Your heart. You mean that thing that pumps blood? No. The seat of your emotions. That's where God, your motives is the heart issue. It's not wood, nail, stone that makes up the church. When the rapture of the church comes, buildings are not going to disappear. People will disappear. The Bible says in Thessalonians that they that have died are going to be risen before those that are alive. You don't bury a church that, 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 that you know, you don't bury buildings. You buried bodies. <laughs> It is the body, soul, and spirit of man, not the wood, planks, and nails of a building. Every born-again Christian holds inside of him or her God, the Holy Spirit. There's one thing that we are all together about as we're born-again Christians. Excuse me. We have the same spirit that dwells in our hearts. You don't go to God. He came to you. You are God's church. You are the living organism. Life came by Jesus Christ, guidance by the Holy Spirit, or the whole being by God. It's all by the Trinity. It's all by God that we are what we are today. Listen, we're saved only by God and Jesus Christ. 
and the Holy Spirit bringing us. 2 Timothy 1.14 We are a marvelous creature. Dogs can't receive what we got. Cats will never get the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, but all dogs do not go to heaven. No dogs go to heaven. Matter of fact, I read in my Bible, there are no animals in heaven. There's only one time I ever read of, of animals being in heaven is when Jesus Christ and we as the church come back on horseback, but that's it. The only representation of animals you have in heaven I see is the cherubim, uh, the lion, the eagle, and the ox. The other one had a face of a man. That's it. I'm sorry to bust your bubble, but animals don't get saved and animals don't go to heaven. For 2 Timothy 1.14, that good thing which was committed into thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. If you are a born again Christian, the Holy Spirit dwells in us, because I'm saved too. 1987, April. Every good, godly thing is of the Spirit of God. Well, I gave that guy a track. No, the Holy Spirit had you give a track. I led that guy to Christ. No, God gave the increase. You are just a vessel. Remember we talked about that before? A vessel. That's all you are. Did, uh, where am I? Do you know without the Holy Spirit we would know we would not have the Word of God? Without the Holy Spirit you would know nothing of God. Without the Spirit of Truth we would know nothing of Jesus Christ, His Son. Why didn't the religious leaders in Jesus' time know? They lacked the truth. They did not have the Spirit of God. Hereby know we, excuse me, yeah, hereby know ye, we that we dwell in Him and He in us because He gave us of His Spirit. That was 1 John 4.13. Hereby we know, let me try it again. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. Who gave us the spirit? The Father. The spirit dwells in us. He said, You keep saying that. I'm repetition. I want you to get that. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. You know when you smoke a cigarette, what are you doing to the Holy Spirit? You know when you tell a lie, what are you doing to the Holy Spirit that's inside you? What if you get in bed with, with somebody that's not your spouse? What are you doing to the Holy Spirit that's inside you? What are you submitting that Holy Spirit to in your life, my friend? John goes further on to say that one that gave us the Spirit is in us, the Trinity. We Christians dwell in God. He said, hereby know we that we, we dwell in Him, and He is in us, because He, God, gave, has given us His Spirit. Not only the Holy Spirit's in us, but God's in us. You think God appreciates what you're doing with, with your temple? You think God appreciates the sins that you are allowing him that dwells inside you to be partakers of? I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. So, listen, you can't say when I sin the Holy Spirit leaves me. No. He does not leave you. He becomes partaker of what you do. Now, that may seem like an oddball teaching, and not something I would put 100% on, but if he dwells in you, you are part of him, and he's part of you. What about when you sin? 
something to think about. Are you going to go to heaven? No, you're already there, the Bible says. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places. This body hasn't made it yet. The Bible says we sit in heavenly places the present time. John 6, 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. You can't lose it. And so don't think, oh, if I sin, you know, God don't see it. God sees it. God lives it because he's in you. There may be, you know, I'm thinking right now in my little pea brain right now. The main fact is those who, who think they can lose it, maybe they, they think they can lose it because they can get away with their sin. I mean, God will pop out of me so I can do what I want to do. When I'm done doing it, God will pop back in. That don't work like that. Because the next verse we're going to look at, Lord willing, next week, shall be with us forever. God, the Holy Spirit, and God that's inside you doesn't take a recess. He doesn't walk the halls in between classes. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, behold the evil and the good. You know what witness will be when you sin? The Holy Spirit. As it cries out to God the Father, this person is making me do this, God. What's the witness? The Spirit of truth. Imagine God and the Holy Spirit walking into a courtroom in the old days. They don't do it today, probably. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's me. Imagine asking God, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, when he is the truth? Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Oh, wait a minute. We got the spirit of truth that dwells in us. That's the first part of our lesson. We saw that John and 1 John said that God dwells in us. Now in Colossians, Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you. Well, Paul is telling us to add the Holy Spirit, the word, and we saw from John, God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. That's an option. You don't, that's, that's up to you. You have a free will to read your Bible or not. Now, you're going to be judged. But John 17, 17 says. You know what John 17, 17 says? That the word is truth. The word is the spirit of truth. It is of God. So the word is the Holy Spirit. According to John 17, 17. You know what 1 John says, uh, 4 or 5, I, 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 know, I know it's in 1 John, see chapter 4 or 5, when with John 1, 1, you know what it says? It says, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, or Ghost, I forget which one. And then it said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word is God. The Word is not only the Holy Spirit, but it's also Jesus Christ. So Colossians 3.16 says, let Jesus Christ dwell in your heart. You still can be saved and have the spirit of truth and not read the Bible, yeah. Paul is saying, up it up a notch. Get in the word and read it. And fill that Holy Spirit. You know, some of you guys out there, you've got a, a, you talk about the heathen, you got a Holy Spirit that lives inside you that is famished. It gets no food, it gets no water, life, it gets no bread of life, it gets no manna, because you are lacking if you at all don't get into the Word. For there are three that bear, okay, here's the verse. There are three that bear record in heaven. 
the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, 1 John 5, 7. So, if the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, dwells in us, the Father dwells in us, the Word should dwell in us. If these three are one, that means God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit all dwell inside you. How's that? You want to talk about schizophrenia? You are four people, if not five, when you serve Satan. You talk about a Christian being two-faced. And think about when you put on airs. There is the Father, God, and the Holy Spirit with the Word. John also writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, John 1.1. 1, 1. The Word has a capital W. And it says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, John 1.14. There is the second member of the Trinity, and there is your complete being inside you. So when you say, oh, I can lose my salvation, you are saying that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit leaves you. And I said, Lord willing, we'll get into next time, shall be with us forever. The ABC today is that God is dwelling inside you, my friend. And in some cases, he's starving. Or in some cases, you give him so much sweet, he's, he's, he's a diabetic. Or the other case is, he's not even inside you. He's not even in you, and you're not saved. So can we tell the truth? Absolutely. The truth is totally God, and God is totally the truth. Jesus, who is the truth, full of truth, John 1, 14, and the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of truth, the Holy Trinity. Scripture with Scripture dwells in every believer. Thy word that I have hid in my heart, Psalms 119, that I may not sin against thee. How do you keep yourself clean? Memorize scripture that, that fits your, your, your sin. And watch the Holy Spirit that dwells in you in your life quote them scriptures back at you through your Bible reading, through your memorization. If we are in God, then we are also in Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So, not only do they dwell in us, but we dwell, uh, well, I'm talking, well, singular. I dwell in the Trinity. The Bible said that we are seated in heavenly places, so I'm there in front of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And they are inside me. And only those that are saved gets that privilege. Now, we are also in Christ Jesus. We are in God. We are in the Holy Spirit. What more unity can one person have? The unity and surety of a born-again Christian. Again, they are in us, and we, and I am in them. You are in the presence of God. And we are fully able to not tell lies. And when you lie, Christian, white, pink, polka dot, whatever it is, What are you doing to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth? Jesus Christ, who is all truth. God, who cannot tell a lie. What are you doing to the Trinity?
That is how serious a lie is. And this is the state of a born-again Christian. He has all three parts of God in him. And you, born-again Christian, are in all three parts of God in heaven. And that's, listen, that's just two verses so far of John. 17 pages we've done. Listen, you ain't on fire for the Lord. I, I, I don't know what to do. You ain't happy and rejoicing that what your state is today, a born-again Christian. You lost your first love. You need to go back to Bethel, where you got saved, where you met the Lord the first time. You know, when you first got saved, God pulled up that U-Haul and got all Satan's junk out. And he didn't need a U-Haul for him. He just moved the Holy Spirit in. Holy Spirit don't have junk. With it. Galatians 5, Ephesians 5, it speaks about the fruits of the Spirit. That's the stuff that came into your heart. Um, we're more than conquerors, the Bible says. Because of our position in God and God's position in us. See you next time. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale.